This is Audio Control's new amplifier from the Altitude series. This is the A1500.1. And we're going to have a look inside, take the case off, show the components, see how much power we can get out of it, and also see the hidden message that lays inside. I must say the color of this amplifier is really unique and it does look really nice. And to the people that I've shown this amplifier to in real life, the first thing they say is, wow, the paint is really cool on this amplifier. It looks really nice. So this is an amplifier that you definitely want to have on show. Also the little things as well, like on the power on and protect logo, the smiley face and sad face. I think that's a really cool touch. Looking at the inputs, you have your 12 volt remote in valet mode, which I'll explain and ground. So the 12 volt looks to be around four gauge. You've got your remote and what valet mode does is when that is being used, it limits the amplifier's output power to 25%. So it gives you peace of mind. Maybe if you hand it over your car to a friend or you take your car to get valeted, that they can't abuse your system and that your amp will not be running at its maximum power that could potentially damage your equipment. This amplifier also takes high to low. So if you've got a factory system that you don't want to part ways with, maybe it controls your infotainment system, heating controls and all sorts, then you do have the option to have high to low level built in to this amplifier, which you can tap off your subwoofer if you've got a built-in subwoofer. If not, you can tap off a door speaker. But I feel like for the best performance, it's always better to use an RCA, a dedicated RCA pre-out. But if worse comes to worse and you can't, there is high to low. You have your remote level control. Then you have your speaker outputs to go to your subwoofer. So you've got two pluses and two minuses. And now we're gonna pop off this panel and show you the adjustments you can make to this amplifier and all the different EQs and switches that you can enable, disable. Do whatever you want. It's supplied with Allen keys to take off all the panels here anyway, but it's just two Allen keys here and this whole plate comes off. So once you've loosened up all the screws, you just pop it off and then you've got all of your adjustments here. I like that even though they're labeled at the front, if it's mounted to a wall, it also shows you what the connectors are that lays beneath as well. So you've got your, these will correspond to that. So that your LC direct here, it shows you everything, no matter what angle you look at from, from the front or from the side. I like it. Looking at the top, it says, well, hello, monobrock amplifier. Then you've got your power and protect that's normally shown your smiley face or sad face that covers over there. I prefer the smiley face or sad face. It's so much better than seeing power and protect. Then you've got your input level switches, high or low. So I'm using RCA, so I'm set to low. Trigger mode, remote, GTO or AUD. You've got your low pass, hertz, 60 to 120 hertz, subsonic. I like the fact that they give you the option of off but you can go between 10 and 50 Hertz gain. Then you've got your LED for max power base, which is their wording for base boost, if I'm not mistaken. And then you've got the level for that there as well. That's it in terms of connectivity and all the different bells and whistles you get for the adjustment. Let's get the case off. And I want to show you a cool little message that lays right underneath this case that maybe if you get a bit too curious, sometimes you'll have a nice surprise. Getting into this amplifier is fairly simple. There is an Allen key screw here, Allen key screw there. And then there's also two teeny tiny Allen key screws here that are so small. But once you pop them out, this whole top panel pops off. Once you've got through all the screws, you just pop this cover off. But be careful, don't just yank it up because there is a cable that connects to the board from the top case. So just pull it up, slide it forward. And you can see there already that cable. You don't want to just yank it up because you'll break that connector. But I slide it forward, bend it up, and look, there is a hidden message. Unless you think you've lost your sock in here, you should put the cover back on. I think that's great. I love it when companies add hidden messages in there. It's a really cool touch. Now, removing the cable, just be very gentle because it is on a board that's on pins. You don't want to put it too hard. Just a little bit of force and it will come straight out. And then this whole top assembly, you can put off to one side. I'll put it down here. And now to look at the rest of the amplifier, we've got to take off these screws here and this plate will come off and we can have a look at the whole amplifier. Also, why I just been unscrewing these screws, I wonder if the am different amplifiers have different messages inside. I do wonder, that would be pretty cool. You just literally pop this whole plate off and you can put it to one side, pop it down here and here is a look inside the amplifier.
for capacitors, we got 2200 microfarads, 100 volt, there's four. And then we've got some 100 volt, 1500 microfarads, got one here, one there. But one thing that's very important in an automotive environment is how well the components are seated down to the board from vibration damage. And I must say, look at this. Solid. Does There's literally no wiggle room in that whatsoever. Here as well. Solid. That is really cool. I like that a lot because some companies you get amplifiers, the transformers raise off the board and you can literally twist them around and eventually that will rub through the um the board and short out. So that's really cool to see. Then looking at the back as well, we got where all the fets and stuff going on, which is mounted to this back side, or I say top side when you're mounting it top ways. Top side, which is where you got all of the fins for the heat sinking. That's the internals. Let's get this put back together and let's chuck it on the dyno. See how much power we can squeeze out of this thing. The amplifier states 1500 watt at 1.3 ohms at 14.4 volt. However, to get the most accurate reading and to make sure I'm giving you guys the most accurate result, I'm gonna set my batteries slightly higher, about 15.5, 15.6, because when you do, when you pull current from a battery, it's gonna drop from the voltage it started with. So if I started pulling current at 14.4, we're no longer testing at 14.4, we could be testing at 13.2, 13 volt. So 15.5, 15.6, going to drop it so it sees a minimum of 14.4 and then that power should be what it if, if we get the 1500 watt we will see we're ready to go so we have the power supply reading 16 volt but after the voltage drop across the wires the battery's reading 15.7 here we have our probes going to the power terminals of the actual amplifier so we can read what the amplifier saw after the drop through the cables and that's going to be on your right here the middle is the power that we're going to hopefully make rated on and the left is a sine wave coming out of the speaker terminals to make sure it's not clipped i have set it already so we shouldn't be clipping and this will be the most power we can make clean before clip let's see if we can make 1500 watt 1500 watt is what we're aiming at Fifteen hundred and eighty-one watt. Nice. That's great. It made rated power at fourteen point four at one point three ohms. That is really cool to see. Now, let's drop it into a bit of clip and see if that adds any additional power. So we'll just go two clicks. One and two, and we'll restart it. There you go, 1715 watt. We'll do 40 hertz burst. Please bear in mind now that this is dynamic, so I can't really tell how far the amp is dropping in voltage because it does it so quickly. So there is no official rating on burst anyway at what voltage you should be doing it at. But this is gonna be starting at around 15.97 on the amplifier. So let's see how much power we get. There you go, 1,872. And we're dropping into the high 14s anyway, based on what this is saying. I saw about 1508, and it could be dropping far lower than that as well. After all that testing, the amplifier is still nice and cool. Still see the numbers there on the screen, dynamically of 1,872 watt. Amps, pretty much room temperature, nice. I must say this amplifier is really cool and the fact that it does make rated power is a plus as well and it makes even more than rated power. It's good to see that audio control have let our new line of amplifiers and it does what it says. It looks the part. It definitely does more than what it says. And yeah, I really like this amplifier. It's really cool. But yeah, that's it guys. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.